In this video, I am going to show you how you can balance and color correct on overexposed S-Log3 footage. An important note which I should mention is that the maximum S-Log3 footage IRE should be under 94 in order to be recoverable. Otherwise, you would lose details in the highlights as you see here in my background the sky. So let's go and see the process. So as you see here, I have imported my footage into the DaVinci Resolve and it was shot with Sony a7 IV in S-Log3 picture profile and I overexposed it to a point where we do not clip the highlights, which is 94 IRE for the S-Log3. Now I want to create eight nodes. I will start creating them. And the first node is going to be CST. The last node is also going to be CST. The second one is going to be balance. The third one is going to be track. The fourth one is going to be vignette. Here I want this node as an outside node, so I will recreate it as an outside. And then I want another node here for tones. I want sharpening. This is it for the note setup. It's a simple note setup. Now we will start with the CST. For the CST, first do not forget to set up your timeline to the DaVinci White gamut. I previously created my timeline. If you check my settings here, you see that timeline color space is set to DaVinci White gamut because I'm working in a DaVinci White gamut zone. If you haven't watched my previous tutorials, please go and watch them. You will learn a lot about the DaVinci White gamut. I will not uh, deep dive into it uh, here. Uh, now I want to and add the color space transform to the CST and the last CST also for the first CST the input color space is going to be the S gamma tree and the input gamma is going to be S log tree the output color space is going to be the Vinci white gamut and the output gamma is also going to be the Vinci intermediate now for the last CST the input is going to be the Vinci white gamut because we are working in a da Vinci white gamut zone between these nodes and the input gamma is a Again, going to be DaVinci Intermediate. Now for the output color space, I'm going to set it to Rec 709 because we are exporting this for social media, TV, YouTube, Instagram, which all of them work in a Rec 709 color space. You see that the colors are now converted to a new space the correct space. Now for the output gamma, I'm going to select the Rec 709 also, which you will see that my footage is properly converted. And as you see, it is overexposed around one and a half, around two stops. And if you check the parades here, you see that we still have room for it to the top. That is why we expose it to the 94 in S log tree, which is the clipping point. Now the thing which we want to do here is to balance it. There are multiple ways to balance the one I do the most is the HDR wheels and primaries. So for the first method, we are going to do it this way. And then I will show the curves method after that. Before starting, I should thank the sponsor of this video, Audio.com, which helps content creators like me to find their desired music really fast. They have a huge music catalog and sound effects library with lots of talented artists. With the filter controls, you can search for music by mood, genre, element, energy to find exactly what you need. You can get your first year of Audio Pro with 70% off using my coupon code SAVE70. The link is in the description. Do not forget to check this amazing offer by audio.com now i go to my hdr wheels and if you see we have an exposure slider here and if i start to decrease the exposure i can easily bring back all the details which is really nice you have so much room to play with the s-log profiles and if i zoom on my face you see that all the details in the face are really beautifully preserved and you do not lose the details if you stick to that 94 rule for the s-log tree you can easily recover the details without any fear if you do it right the right way i'm going to create a tutorial in the near future about exposing the s log tree footages ultimate tutorial do not forget to subscribe to my channel so you do not miss that tutorial and now i want to add a little bit of saturation to this in order to pop the footage and around plus 15 i think it's good and i have a good saturation here now i want to play a little bit with the temperature and tint in order to make it a little bit cooler i think it's a little bit warm i always try to bring my footages to a neutral point and then I will add the tones myself so around 500 I think it's a neutral point for this footage and again I want to add a little bit of tint in order to make it 
magenta-ish, not so much, just a little bit because I do not like my footage to be greenish and as you see we did a really beautiful job in order to bring back the details and in this way you have the minimum amount of noise in the dark areas and we still have a room to play with the tones, the shadow levels, the mid-tones and the highlights and for that I'm going to use my primaries here and I go to my primary wheels and I will start to play with the lift I want to decrease the lift in order to add contrast to my shadows and black and as you see here we have a beautiful contrast now in the dark areas the shadows and the blacks and then I want to add a little bit to the gamma in order to bring up my midtones and as you see now the footage is more balanced and again if you want to add a little bit of uh, contrast to your blacks to your lower blacks here as you see in the parade I always use my log wheels and here I want to decrease the shadows and as you see it adds a beautiful punch to the blacks I really like this and I always use the log wheels and it makes a beautiful punch for the blacks which is really nice after that I want to decrease my mid-tone details I really like this effect this makes my footages really dreamy and as you see here when I decrease the mid-tone details it also somehow retouches the skin and as you see it makes it really soft I put it around minus 50 and I really like the results and this is it for my balance note now we go to the vignette and then I will go back to the track to show you such an amazing uh, option here in DaVinci Resolve for the vignette I want to create a window here I will start to create a window I want to add softness to it around 12 I always do it and I want to invert this and as you see here now we are affecting the outside for the vignette and I want to go to my curves I will disable this and I will add a lot of vignette and as you see it makes the footage really pop the subject which is really nice you can play with this window in order to bring the vignette more towards the center and I want to move it a little bit to the upwards and as you see it adds a really beautiful 3d effect to your footage which is really nice and after that I want to go to my track uh, here we have such an amazing option with the magic mask and if I go to the first of the video and I put the quality on better and I want to create a mask here and I select myself and this does a really great job in selecting me and and if I hit the play button it will start tracking me and I will speed up the video here now as you see if I enable the mask you see how well it tracked me in the footage there are a little bit of unselected parts here but it's not important I will add so much blur radius and the thing I want to do here is to revert the mask because I want to select the background and now if I disable this effect and go to my curves you see how I can bring down the exposure behind me which is really nice if I show you it makes a really dramatic effect in your footage and it is really nice this is the first time I'm using this option in my tutorials and I really like it you can use it to achieve so many beautiful contrasts which is really nice and here it is for the tracking option you can always play with these options for the mask to achieve a better selection if you go further with the blur radius it makes the mask really soft and it wouldn't be visible I still think I need a little bit more contrast in the blacks and shadows so I go to my balance and here for the lift I will decrease it two more stops now you see we have much more contrast in the shadows but when you check this here you see that our tracking is gone so I have to do it once again the nodes before the tracking then changes you need to do the track once again so I remove this stroke and here I go to the first of the video and I will select myself once again with the qualifier and then I will track me once again and you will see now we achieve a better result this time with the lowered contrast in the shadows and more punchy shadows we have here now I want to check it as you see we have a beautiful contrast behind me it depends on your taste if you want to background more darker I really like this effect so I leave it here and then I want to go to my tones note 
For the tones note, I want to make this footage warmer. I use the primary bars for my tones. So I will start with the gain and I want to decrease the blues in order to add yellows to my highlights and as you see we have lots of greens so then I want to decrease my greens and I will start to decrease my greens to around 95 and now I feel it's a little bit reddish so I will decrease the reds a little bit not so much and for the gammas here again I want to decrease the reds a little bit and decrease the greens and here you see that we have a warmer footage and if you feel that we have a little bit of red in the shadows as you see here you can go to the log wheels and here decrease the reds minus one and you see that it's uh, really a small effect but affects only your shadows I really like this cool effect it only affects the lower parts of the histogram and the parade and makes your shadows a little bit cooler your blacks I mean the deepest part of the shadows which is blacks and you achieve a, such a beautiful result and your footage gets a really beautiful warm tone which I really like and this is it for the tones after that the only thing that remains is the sharpen and I go to my blur and sharpen and add a little bit of sharpen which makes the footage sharper which is really nice and if I show you the overall before and after you see how far we gone here and we make this footage so much more dramatic with this uh, style of color grading and now I want to go to my second method in order to show you the second method which is the curves method here I just want to create a version with this and I will select a clip and here I want to create a new version and here I select the name the curves now we have a new version if you see here we have a curves for the new version I want to Disable all the nodes, I enable the CST and the CST and I enable the balance. Now I want to reset my balance node so we only work with the balance and now I go to my curves and here I want to decrease my upper point to a point here which I am pleased and now I want to decrease my blacks and make it more punchy and it depends on your opinion which you are more flexible with the curves or the HDR wheels or primaries I am okay with the HDR wheels and primaries but you can work with the curves too curves may be more flexible for some people which work more with Photoshop and Lightroom but again depends on your taste and as you see we have a beautiful contrast now here and after that you can go to the primaries and play with the, the saturation add a little bit of saturation to your footage but again in my opinion the HDR wheels work really better and more natural compared to the primaries for the saturation and temperature and if I show you you see that the temperature reacts a little bit different here and I will put it around minus 70 and I will add a little bit of tint not so much and as you see we could balance our footage with the curves and again it depends on your opinion if you are pleased with this you can also then play with your gamma and gain in order to add more balance to your footage and if I enable all the nodes you see that they achieve a little bit different result but again you can play with it you can enable the tracking you need to do the process once again because as you change the settings it needs to re-scan the footage so here again I go to the first of the video and I select myself with the mask and then I play the footage in order for it to scan and as you see here it scans the footage now as you see we have converted this again it depends on your taste whether you want to go with the curves or HDR wheels I prefer the HDR wheels method it's much more flexible and I really like it the one thing I did not do here in the curves method was the mid-tone detail in the balance I forgot to add mid-tone details now it is much more softer and I can also add more contrast again here for the curves now I think it is much more better with this contrast which I added and I forgot also to add outside node here for the 
middle of the picture so I can add outside as you see adds a beautiful punch to the center of the video I also forgot to add this to the HDR wheels again here the outside note this makes the footage more punchy and as you see I really like these small steps it makes it really cool again overall I like the HDR wheels and primaries and here was it for today's tutorial which one did you guys more like please tell me in the comment section the curves method or the HDR wheels not so much difference but again it depends on your taste so this was it for today's tutorial guys if you have any questions please feel free to ask them in the comment sections and I will be seeing you in my future videos goodbye